So I didn't do a speak them in a couple of weeks because, um, you know, I was busy with other things. I was way too busy to record a speak them. I was just doing a lot of Star Wars content during this time. And because uh, that was the movie that was coming out, it was a hot movie. But uh, so I took a couple weeks off or whatever. I did promise, like I told you guys back in April, I'd be doing a new speak them every week or every two weeks. I did take a couple weeks off this time at the end of the year, but we're starting fresh again. And, you know, um, definitely check out the Speak Dumb playlist over on the channel on World of Geek Dumb. I did a couple of them on Geek Dumb 101, did a few back in the day, but I did move the series over to this channel. So um, what I wanted to talk about here is actually a follow-up video because a few people had asked me about it. But I did a video about investing and how you should invest when you're young because the younger you are when you invest the more compound interest you're going to be able to accrue. Um, even if, like, if I were to invest, let, just an example, if I were to invest like $10,000 when I'm 40 and you invested 10000 when you're 20 because of the extra time, you know, that you have it in there, by the time we're able to take that money out when we're, you know, older, you would have way more interest payments. Like, you would have way more interest accruing than me and you get back way more money. So the younger you are, the better you are to invest. But the problem is, you know, when you're young, you don't have that much money, right? When you graduate high school or college, you're not going to have money to invest. You should still invest a little bit. Don't get me wrong, but you can't really invest large amounts. But that's okay because just like a hundred bucks a month going into like a Roth IRA will benefit you, even if you do it when you're younger. So trust me on that one. But I wanted to do a follow up because people were telling me to do more videos on investing and. You know, my whole thing is, and I'm going to be very transparent with you guys. I, You know, if you've been following me since I started doing this or at any time, you know that I'm not a liar or a bullshitter. You know that I hit you with the truth every time, even if it hurts. Um, and usually I don't say mean things, not anymore. I know I definitely used to. Uh, but when it comes to, to this kind of shit, I can't really tell you exactly what to do. Uh, because there's way too many things that you can do. You have a lot of options out there when it comes to investing, right? Uh, you have IRA accounts. You have 401ks. You have um, even CDs through your banks. You know, there's all kinds of different investments and investment portfolios. You have real estate investment trusts, trust REITs, which I do have a few of. Um, and I can't tell you which stocks to pick, but I can kind of give you some concepts, you know, as far as uh, what you can do. So uh, I'll do the best that I can. Because it, it, here's, here's the reason why. Because if I were to go into like everything that I do, it would be like three hours. And I don't want to waste your time. And, you know, I'm not a trained financial advisor. So I'm letting you know. And I have to make that clear so I don't get in trouble. I am not a trained financial advisor, okay? I'm just kind of giving you some concepts, okay? Um, but yeah, investing is important for your retirement because... We, there's no guarantee Social Security is going to be what it is, and whenever you do retire, you might not get enough money to live a comfortable life. I'll, I'll give you an example. My dad, um, my dad never saved for retirement ever. He just got Social Security, and all he got was 800 bucks a month, and I'm not kidding. The only thing he got when he retired was $800 a month, so he had to work under the table to make ends meet because... 800 bucks a month, dude, is not going to pay for shit nowadays, dude. I remember when I went apartment hunting a few years ago, I couldn't even find anything in Florida um, for under, where I lived anyways, for under 1200 bucks. And don't even get me started on like if you live in California. Don't even get me started. So it's just not going to be a good idea unless, you know, you have family that you're going to get a big, maybe you're going to get like a relative that's rich or something. That's different. Most of us don't have that. So one thing that I will tell y'all is that there is a book called Everyday Millionaires that y'all got to check out. So what they did with that book is they interviewed a crap load of millionaires and the vast majority of them, I think I forget the number, but it's like something like 88% did not inherit money. They saved it up through investments, built it up with their income and became millionaires. And you know, when you do it that way, when you, if you're going to become a millionaire, most of us are not going to hit that until we're in our forties or fifties point blank. It's not going to happen. Um, unless you win the lottery or, you know, you strike it big and you get famous or something like that. You're an athlete, but most regular people, if you just work a job and you're investing, you're not going to hit that big one mil until you're in your 40s and 50s. And also understand too that 
uh, make sure you understand that being a millionaire does not mean having a million dollars cash. It means having a million dollars net worth. So if you have a house that's worth half a million and you have half a million in the bank, you're a millionaire, right? Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up here with the investment, this investment video is because the reality is, you know, most people, regular people, if they invest and they're patient and they have a little bit of luck, you can become a millionaire. You really can. You know, obviously it won't happen for everybody, but even if you don't become a millionaire, let's say you save up your money and then when you retire, you only get 700000 That's $700,000, bro. And remember, if you invest in Roth IRAs, you when you get that money, you don't pay taxes on it. Because one thing that you have to understand, and I'm hoping that, I really hope people, see, I, I'm doing this video, and I'm in, it, most of y'all are probably old enough to get this, but I, I'm wondering if there's some like 18, 19 year old people listening to this who don't understand this, but you got to pay taxes on everything that you get. So let's say you win a million dollars in the lottery. You're not getting a million dollars. You're only getting about 600,000. That's actually what you're getting because the other 400,000 goes to the IRS. Point blank, that's how it is. Um, that's just how it is in the world. Whether you work for somebody or you're self-employed, you have to pay taxes. So think about it. You get a large lump of sum of money when you retire and it's tax-free. You have to understand how valuable that is. So basically what I wanted to talk about in this video and as far as investing goes is I want to discuss the power of mutual funds. And you've probably heard this before, but mutual funds, I think, are a great way to get started in investing. Now, I have friends who do penny stock investing and stock trading, which basically what that is is you're putting money into the stock market and you are actually monitoring the stock market every day. You're buying and selling every day and you're, you know, you're active in the stock market. And I know people who have made thousands, thousands of dollars doing this, but after a while it kind of becomes a full-time job and it becomes very anxiety ridden and you get nervous and you, you know what I mean? You, it's not for everyone. Now, some of y'all can do it. I'm not going to stop you from doing it, but it's not for everyone. And you can lose your ass if you make a bad decision. Um, people who do this kind of stuff are usually really in tune. Um, they have a lot of research. They do a lot of research. It is very time consuming. You can't just throw money in and expect to get it back like that. That's one way, but I always love approaching it with the mutual fund uh, route, which basically, for those who don't know, mutual funds are multiple stocks and bonds inside of one sort of mini portfolio, if that makes sense. So, for example, I have a mutual fund that is a tech-based fund, and in that fund, I have stocks from Amazon, from Microsoft, from, I think, a little bit of Apple. Um, so, basically, what a mutual fund is, is somebody who's like a mutual fund director creates a fund or, you know, the mutual fund company, whoever you go with, of multiple stocks. And so when you buy into a mutual fund, they take your money and they kind of split it amongst all the stocks. So to make it simple, I'm going to simplify this. Let's say that a mutual fund, and we're going to simplify this just very simple, 10 bucks and there's 10 companies. It's like $1 per company. Like, you know, and again, I'm simplifying it with simple dollars. It's never a dollar, but you know, I'm just making it easy for everybody. So the reason why mutual funds are a good idea is because if one company does bad, the other companies are probably not going to do so bad and it'll pick up the slack. So if you invest in a tech mutual fund, right, let's say Apple has a bad year. Apple doesn't sell for whatever reason, but Microsoft does. You're not going to lose that much money or you'll gain money because of how good Microsoft does. So mutual funds kind of balance out Um you know, stock trading. So you don't have to do that hard work, you know. And when it comes to purchasing mutual funds, you don't have to do that much research. You kind of have to look at what they're graded at. You have to, you do have to pay a commission. That's just how it is. And you have to also examine um, the how, how well it's done historically. You know, uh, you have to look at last five years, last 10 years, last 15 years to see how it's done. Now, there are some skewed numbers, or at least there were, because remember, in 2008, the stock market crashed. So you're going to have some skewed numbers. But if you do the 10-year thing now, because we're now in pretty much 2020, it's going to go back to 2010. So you have a much clearer picture of where things are going to go. So do your research. And if you're going to get a mutual fund, I do advise you to get one with your Roth IRA or whatever account you want to do. You don't have to do it in a Roth IRA. You can do a bridge account. There's a lot of different options. If you're confused about what I'm talking about, 
definitely seek out a financial advisor. A lot of times your bank will actually provide you with one if you have a certain amount of money. Um, but you have to also be careful because when you seek a financial advisor, you got to make sure that this person is a teacher and make sure that they are being honest with you. They're not just trying to screw around with your money. Like if you find somebody who's like, all right, you know, if you give me this much, I'm going to make you a millionaire in X amount of years. Don't just be real careful with shysters. You know what I'm saying? Be real careful. And also don't, even though I'm telling y'all that you should invest, don't invest everything be smart about this because it is a gamble dip your toes in slowly if you got let's say you got 10 grand in the bank obviously you don't want to invest all 10 grand you want to have some cash you got to have some cash you know and you can't you can always sell the stock if you want but you're not going to get everything back if you sell it too soon because you have to pay commissions on it so it's always a good idea to keep cash um and you know have an, have an emergency fund and things of that nature But I think mutual funds is a good way to kind of start investing in the stock market. And the way that things go is you got to look into people like Warren Buffett, you know, these guys who are pros at this. As long as this country, the United States, and by the way, this is strictly for the U.S. people. I should also say that. So if you're listening to this in like India or the U.K. or somewhere outside of the U.S., I have no idea what, what to do for you. So back to what I was saying. As long as the U.S. doesn't go into like a, a serious like bankruptcy, depression, or you know type of thing, uh, which even if it does, you can actually capitalize on that if you know what you're doing. Because when things go down, it becomes cheaper. Remember, buy low, sell high. So it could actually be beneficial if you have money saved up. And every time we've gone through a recession, we've gotten out of it. It, it always happens that way in this country. And remember that. So... Uh, mutual funds are safer, I feel, than just investing in the stock market. But remember, when you invest in a mutual fund, um, and again, this is just my experience. I am not a professional or anything. This is what I have done on my own. Um, when you invest in a mutual fund, I don't touch the money. So if you throw in like 5K, like 5,000 or 2,000 bucks into your mutual fund, Don't take it out right away. Give it time. And I mean a lot of time, like 10 years. Like forget that you even have it in there. And I'm saying 10 years on the – you shouldn't even take it out in 10 years. You should wait until you you retire. Like it depends on what we're talking about. If you're going to get a mutual fund for retirement purposes, you can't touch that, especially if you have a Roth IRA. You can't touch it to your 59 and a half because – if you do, you get taxed. See what I'm saying? You lose your that that privilege if you take money out. But if you want kind of a bridge mutual fund, like you know, you have let's say you have your retirement good, right? And you want to invest more money, you can always get a bridge account, which is basically just a bridge account. A, a phrase I'm using for a non-retirement account. You're putting money in at loan limitations and hoping to get money back. That's just how it is. But with mutual funds, you know, it's a lot safer and it's a good way to kind of dip your toes in without having to check them, you know, all the time. I check my mutual funds once every couple weeks, once every month. Um, Some people don't even do that. I mean, you just leave it in there. The idea is it's long term. Like when you're investing, dude, it's long term. You can't expect to invest, you know, a thousand bucks and get it get 5000 back in a year. It doesn't work that way. It's going to take several years. And the important thing is you have to keep investing, if you can, of course. But it's better to do it young. So I hope that I've given you some more tips here about what I do. You know, I started with mutual funds. Um, I started with a Roth IRA. I didn't have a 401k. Um, that's the way I started investing. And then I, because uh, I had a money market account already. And then I got into REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust. And I'm still kind of learning about those, seeing how they go. But I did get a couple that are pretty good. Um, Real Estate Investment Trust is basically like a stock, but it's for real estate. So instead of having to buy a house or buy property and have somebody manage it, having people call you at 3 in the morning, oh, my plumbing is out. Because if you own property and you rent it out, you got to deal with that stuff. Um, you just have a REIT, which is like a company owns the property, you invest in it and you get some money back for, you know, rent or whatever. And it could, it's not just houses. It could also be apartment buildings. It can be commercial businesses, hospitals. There's real estate investment trusts for everything. I might do a separate video about these. Um, but they usually give you some pretty good dividend returns. The only thing you have to uh, understand is that 
if you actually own like that's if you're doing REIT real estate investing if you're doing regular real estate investing like actually buying and selling property and flipping houses and whatnot if you're doing that you can actually get more money doing that because you own everything and you have so many tax breaks when you do that that you end up actually making more but it's also a hassle and a lot of people when they get into real estate they just do it full time not right away you start with one property you know then you move on might do a video about that in the future as well. That's a separate video. But uh, real estate investment trust, I think, is a good way to get into real estate without actually buying a house and selling it yourself. You know, you're going in and you're uh, buying stocks in a company who does that. See what I'm saying? So they take care of all all the managing and the the plumbing and the the painting. That's all taken care of by the company. You just put money in and get a return, hopefully. Uh, and like I said, and also, you know, retirement homes, I have a couple stocks, uh, a couple REITs for retirement homes, like for old folks homes and trailer parks. And yes, believe it or not, trailer park REITs pay pretty well. So at least they have for me. So uh, again, but the market goes up and down. The important thing is that when the market goes down, don't freak out. Don't freak out. As long as you have money saved, you're going to be okay. But remember, if it goes down and if you're a smart investor, you might be able to buy during that time make some of that money back. But again, this is just kind of general advice. I can't give you detailed advice because everyone's different. You all have different goals and you have different approaches. Some people out there are very aggressive investors. Some are very passive and kind of relaxed investors. You know, I'm somewhere in the middle where I started out being kind of more relaxed, but the more time passes, the more aggressive I want to be and take some more risks for some of these foreign companies. You can also invest in with mutual funds for stuff in China, other countries, new companies coming up. I mean, there's all kinds of, there's, there's so much. And that's why I can't go into detail because there is so much, but I'm giving you just the basic concepts, you know. Hopefully this uh, video found you well and hopefully you'll look into it more because you can always do your own research as well. There's other YouTube channels out here that do this kind of stuff. There's books you can buy. Um, I'm just kind of hoping to open up the door for y'all to at least look into it. Then that way when you guys retire or even before you retire, you might you might make a lot of money before you retire. But I'm saying the goal is when you retire, you can live a great life and travel wherever you want to go, fly wherever you want to go, and just really enjoy life without having to do a fucking thing. You ain't got to go work. You just got money. And that's the best thing, to, the best way to retire. You know what I'm saying? You only work if you want to work and on whatever you want to work on. And that's the goal, being truly truly financially free and some people do it before retirement but you know not everyone does retirement's usually the the best time but uh because you're not going to get rich it's harder to get rich before retirement you know it takes time and work and you know luck in some cases it does take luck as well but the goal here is to make sure you're good to go uh, in your later years in your life right now when you're in your 20s and 30s and 40s you got to work but maybe later on you won't anyways thanks so much and we'll talk soon and uh love you guys